Hey everybody, it is Scott the Steenroller, Steen with winnersandwinders.com, coming to you with the one and only Steenroller free play of the day. As always, having some fun, liking what we're doing, we'd appreciate the thumbs up, just smash that sucker here. Do it right at the beginning, I'll count it down, get ready to smash, three, two, one, smash that thumb. Thanks guys, appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, smash that one as well. And of course, check out me and Ryan Shell doing our thing each and every day as we uh, do our little radio slash podcast slash video uh, called Winners and Winers Radio. And of course, we are going to be doing special edition that you'll only be able to find either in podcast form or here on the YouTube channel. So we're going to be handicapping all of Saturday's games. That should be up sometime later on this evening. Alrighty. So, uh, of course, we want to know what you're playing. Put those plays in the comments section. You get them right. Hey, we'll give you the shout out. You get enough of them right. And you could be the gapper of the day. All right, guys. Well, without further ado, talk a little bit about this game yesterday. We had the uh, we had the Bulldogs. We had the Citadel Bulldogs plus the 35 points. Yeah, tough road to hoe when we go down, the, what, 31 nothing in the first half. However, Citadel, uh, I don't know. They're not really a second half team, but they do better against teams in the second half because most, most times they're facing the second and third stringers. That was absolutely the case. Finally, finally, late in the game, the Citadel went on the long drive, converted a couple fourth downs, very tense. They got in there, scored the touchdown. They go down by 31. You got about, what, four and a half, five minutes left. Just, we need, just, we know Coastal Carolina is going to score. We just need them to run the ball slowly, maybe take it, uh, you know, five yards at a time. But no, Coastal makes a couple of, t- couple of first downs and then throws deep. With about two minutes left. Uh, just terrific. As they completed that one over the middle for about 30 yards. That killed us. We just needed them to run a little more clock so they would kneel down. That didn't happen. They then ran a reverse for about 10 yards from the 15 down to the 5. You knew it was coming and it absolutely did as they punched it in. And there's nothing sadder than watching to try, trying to watch a triple option team go down the field with a minute left for a meaningless touchdown. Needless to say... Didn't happen. So, you know what? Didn't work out for us, but we still absolutely uh, were in the ball game there. So, I just feel bad for everybody that watched that game all the way through to the end because it was brutal. All right. Uh, As far as a premium goes, we went uh, 0-1-1. We had the Ohio State Buckeyes. That was a push, of course. And we had Tennessee. Tennessee just fumble fucked around too much. They When they... When they looked good, they looked very good, but they just weren't consistent enough to quite do the job. We, another chance we had for a backdoor cover there late. Uh, runner breaks it breaks free and just gets shoestringed at about the, uh, whatever it was, the 30-yard line. It wasn't close enough, and that was a couple of plays later. They fumble, and it's a shame because they, they also had their foot on the gas with inside uh, two minutes left. Um, Josh Heupel wanted some more points, didn't get them. So, uh, and... We had the over in the Houston Baptist game. And Houston Baptist, they missed their quarterback, Zappy, quite a bit. In fact, Zappy had a great game for Western Kentucky through seven, through seven touchdown passes and seven incompletions. That's a nice day. Uh, he was definitely a step up from uh, from Houston Baptist. So that one didn't work. So it was all in all, uh, not the best day. What we go? 0-2 oh, and, oh, and 1, right? No? Yeah, yeah. So, no, 0-3 oh, and 1. Yeah, not good. But you know what? It's a long season. We're okay. It's uh, time to work it out, kids. And we're going to start with the Old Dominion Wake Forest game. Woohoo! We're going to play the under. Under 62 in this one. No, neither one of these teams has a good defense. Absolutely not. Wake Forest uh, still got a good defensive line. I take it back. They were a very good defensive line, uh, despite the fact they lost Boogie Basham in the second round NFL draft last year or this year, rather, in 2021, still should be the strong point of that defense. And they have problems in the defensive backfield. But good chance that defensive backfield won't see a lot of action because I think their main focus is going to be on getting to the ODU quarterback, whoever that happens to be. He still hasn't announced which one it's going to be. Uh, But ODU is going to be mainly focused on running the football, trying to kill the clock, and trying to avoid the Demon Deacons pass rush. Um, I think the, the Deacons will uh, definitely put up some points on this horrific Monarchs unit. Another bad defensive team. But they also 
have lost some key players at the skill positions, and they're going to need a little time to get everything to come together there. Like I said, ODU knows their only chance is to keep this one even respectable is to slow the pace down, try and run the football. I expect them to do that. I don't think they're going to have enough success to be able to sustain drives up and down the field. I think they'll hold the ball long enough to cut down on the opportunities for Wake Forest, though. You know what? Let's call it about a 41-13 final as Wake Forest takes care of business. But uh, I don't think they do enough to get that over the total. So we're going to play ODU Wake Forest under the 62. At the end of that one, you guys can join me as we pick up our winning tickets and head back to the window. All right, guys, you know how I did yesterday. Let's check it and see how y'all did, shall we? <clears throat> First of all, I wanted to address something. Patrick Dunlap made a comment in the se in the comment section. He's absolutely right. We uh, yesterday on yesterday's video we talked about uh, beating the line move on our on our halftime line with Jacksonville State. We had it capped at eight eight and a half. Actually went up to nine or nine and a half. In some spots, said we beat the line. I had it backwards. Uh, I'll be I'll be the first to admit it. I I was thinking in the wrong direction and absolutely made a mistake. So. Uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to take victory laps whenever I hit one right, and I'll do a mea couple whenever I whenever mea culpa whenever I hit one wrong. So my apologies to anybody. And sorry for the confusion. Obviously, I know you guys are super sharp. Sharp. I'm sharp. <laughs> super sharp. Yikes. Super sharp. I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. And uh, good on you for Patrick and for uh, pointing that out. Appreciate it. And uh, glad I could address it. All right, let's move on, shall we? Bronco Devil. Oh man, he's my favorite. He goes 1-0, plus 500. He had the North Carolina State team total over. Uh, Mikey Butler goes 2-2. Two and two. He got juiced. Would have had a winning day. Made the mistake of tailing us. I'm sorry, Mikey. Thought the Citadel was going to get there, buddy. Not quite. C-Dub going 4-1, plus 290. Greg Gillings. Oh, no. Right, we'll go back to Greg. Uh, he's going to be one of our, uh, you know, you know. Uh, Stephen the Godfather Godon going 2-1-1, one one, plus 90. And everybody else going to be capper of the day. So let's take a look and see who it is. Uh, it is Bronco Devil. Oh, okay. the, the name's so nice they say it twice. Bronco Devil plus 500, North Carolina State. Uh, Greg Gillings, 2-0 plus 200. ICQ Humble faded us on the court, Coastal Carolina. He called for a 40-point Chanticleer's victory. Ha, not even close. <laughs> As they win it by 38. Good call, buddy. Uh, 1 0 plus 500. Sean O'Reilly goes 1 0 plus 500. He had Australia as a World Cup qualifier. Uh, Ninja, Ninja 13 goes 1 0 plus 500. He had the A's on the run line. Jason M, clean sheet, 4 0 plus 400. Brandon Zerfus, that's why I like you guys. Brandon Zerfus, you got college football, you got baseball, you got soccer. He takes the New York Liberty plus 12. It's a brilliant play. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Looking for that under the radar shit. 1-0 plus 500, Liberty lose by 10. Brandon Zerfus, nicely done. So, without further ado, your cappers of the day are Bronco Devil, Greg Gillings, ICQ Humble, Sean O'Reilly, Ninja 13, Jason M., and Brandon Zerfus. Congratulations, everybody, because you all are the cappers of the day. Well done, boys. Well done to the rest of us. You know what? The rest of you, I should say. Let's go out there and uh, have a little fun. As the old T-Train would say, let's make it our day. A lot of stuff going on. Let's go make some money, have a little fun, and we'll be back here tomorrow. Do it all again, all right? You guys take care, and we'll see you tomorrow.